Hello everybody, welcome back to Dubious Engineering. Today we're at the Museum of Computing in Swindon. Right. And we are with Keith from uh, the Digital Orphanage. Mm -hmm. Keith has his uh, own YouTube channel. And Keith is uh, one of the volunteers here and he's very kindly offered to take us around this magnificent museum so that we can share some of the contents of this fabulous place with you guys. There's an awful lot of nostalgia that's really hitting home for me. I look at a lot of this stuff and I think to myself, my goodness, I had that, I had that, I had that when I was a kid. Some of it's way older. So, I mean, some of the stuff dates dates back to, I mean, there's some, there's teletype machines in here. There's a couple of old typewriters. Um, it goes through the whole range, including all of the Apples and the Commodore Pets and the Commodore 64s and the Spectrum 128s and the Spectrum... 48, so there's a Mark 14 over there as well. Mm -hmm. If you get the opportunity and you're in the Swindon area or you fancy making a trip out to Swindon, mm -hmm. come and check this place out. Mm -hmm. It's open on Saturdays. Yep, we're open Saturdays and it's a very hands-on museum. So come along, there's a lot of things that you can actually use, games consoles, old 8-bit computers. Uh, obviously we've got some things behind glass, uh, some of the more rare things like Sam Coupes and things like that, but there's a lot to play on. And if you've got young children, they also have an area here where you can put together bits of Lego to make um, Pac-Man and hmm. various other sort of retro uh, uh, computer characters. And then on top of that, if you've got slightly older children, there's a gaming centre as well. Mm -hmm with uh, some of the more modern game consoles. So your yep. kids can sit down and have a play with some of the modern consoles, something that perhaps they're a bit more familiar with and used to. Yeah, we, on, on the console side, we span from everything from Pong right up to, we've just added a Nintendo Switch, so that's back up today there. Exactly, I was just gonna say, there's, there's also the other end of the spectrum, so you can encourage your kids to have a little play with the computer games of yesteryear. Mm -hmm. So two, two bats, one ball, very boring, I'm mm -hmm. sure. For, for, that's where for, I started. For, exactly, that's where I was as well. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, but one thing that we were missing in the museum was a bit of a shrine to the Amiga. Right. Um, so we've got a bit of a shrine to Apple behind us yes, here. Yes, indeed. That's uh, quite, quite a quite yeah, good, isn't and, it? Yeah. And I've never been an Apple person, so I was like, where's all the Amigas? And then we had some other you know, visitors going, where are your Amigas? So that's what I'm putting together at the moment, uh, is a bit of a shrine to the Amiga. Fantastic. Um, You've worked with Neil yeah. from Retro Man Cave on some projects as well, haven't you? I have, yes. Uh, we've uh, invited Neil in and he's worked with me on an Amstrad show and tell and then getting the display up and going for that. Uh, and the latest one was a Play Choice, Nintendo Play Choice 10 uh, arcade machine that we've got here that had gotten a bit, a uh, little bit dirty and one of the monitors had failed. So uh, that was good fun getting it working uh, and getting people to, to have a look at that and then come here and play it. Excellent, excellent. Mm. So pop over to um, the Digital Orphanage and also pop over to the Retro Man Cave as well. Check out both of those channels if you haven't already and uh, you'll see there's some really good content there, some really cool old school computer systems that are being reworked, revamped, revitalized, refurbished. Yeah. And, and, and if you're wondering why I'm holding screwdriver and stuff, it's because um, we're here on a Sunday. I work behind the scenes, so I like coming in on a Sunday when we're closed and it's quiet uh, and I'll do things like create a display or today I'm coming in and replacing some of the power adapters with something a bit more rated and modular uh, because everything needs to be plugged in and working because uh, that's what people expect, you know, to yeah. come in and have a play on things. So we, yeah. want, and we want it to be safe and working and neat and tidy. I love this place. Well recommended, well recommended. There is so much stuff here, Keith. It's absolutely incredible. I've been looking at little mobile computing devices like the Scions and the Palm Series 3s. Then I've been seeing um, Amstrad's, Dragon 32s, 
um, Sinclair 48K, Sinclair 128. I've seen a lot of Apple stuff here. Um, and, and, and that's sort of around my era. Before that, there's sort of ticker tape machines, there's teletype machines, a couple of old school typewriters. Do you, do, you know, um, do you know what the oldest bit of kit is that you've got here? It, I, I think oldest part would probably be some of the mechanical calculators that, that do go back a, a, a long, long way. way. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. the pre-digital era. Yeah. Uh, but it shows where uh, effectively computing came from. There's the Sinclair Mark 14 as well, um, which I have one of, oh, really? amazingly at home. <laughs> yeah. Needs a little bit of work. Uh, one day I, I have promised myself that I might get around to trying to fix it. Very good. Um, it's not mine, it's my friend's, so, um, uh, so I, have to, I have to be very careful <laughs> about this, absolutely, yeah. I remember, as a kid, I remember um, the three and a half inch discs, mm -hmm. then I remember the, is it the three and a quarter inch disc format that they Yeah, had. Amstrad used a lot of. Yeah. Then there was the five and a half, five and a quarter inch discs, was it? When, when we say they were floppy discs, they actually were, they were sort of like, yes. um, they were bendable, weren't they? Yeah, they had some compliance to them when you popped them into the hard drive and closed the gate down. It was quite a physical experience loading a game into a computer. But, but of course, before that, we've got the example, which is the eight-inch floppy disk. The eight-inch floppy disk, yeah. And I'd not seen one of those really? before. No. Okay, but so they're, they're just like a five and a quarter inch, but just bigger. Bigger, indeed, yeah, <laughs> yeah, same, yeah, same yeah. thing. Yeah. But like with everything, the things are getting smaller, but the actual amount you can get on them is exponentially more. Indeed, yeah, so that's the way technology advances. And actually going back even further than that, I noticed that you had in uh, on, the, on the shelf um, a drive platen, a replaceable drive platen. Yes. Um, and that had, by the looks of things, about seven or eight different sort of hard disk platters in there. Yeah. In there. Uh, and it was a cartridge that you would load into like a washing yeah. machine looking uh, device. Uh, and those have been the days when your computer running your business would have filled most of this, this room. This room, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that, that, that platen had two megabytes of, uh, of, of memory in it, which really, as you, as you quite rightly say, is um, very is very large for the amount of memory that we could yeah. store compared to what we can do today. And the cost of that would have been oh. beyond the reach of uh, you know, home users, that's for sure. Indeed, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Museum of Computing here in Sweden is completely run by volunteers. Yes. So it is actually quite important that if you are in the area, that you know, and you have a bit of time, please pop in and see these guys. It's well worth the visit. There's an awful lot of stuff in here that's well worth looking at, and a lot of it triggers some fantastic old nostalgic memories. And it's amazing value for money. I mean, our ticket prices are not high, uh, and there are family ticket prices as well. Uh, and you can come in and spend a few hours here. Yeah. And, you know, if you've got kids that have never seen a lot of the stuff that you used to use, bring them in here, show them where your computing history was. Um, and it's all here. You don't have to fill up your home then. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like I've done. And if, yeah. you, if, you, if you're bold and you've got a beard, they might give you a discount. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to be bold no. and have a beard. But it helps. Be able to get you, but it helps. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic place. Thanks ever so much for showing us around today. You're welcome. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>
really thank you very much for a, for a great You're look right. around today and, um, and, and, and as I said to, to everybody it, it's well worth coming out here to visit the museum if you enjoy computers um, they've got almost everything here I mean it is magnificent